Good morning. Today I've I'm doing something a little different. Now in my in the video where I went to explore the east coast of Loch Ness, I had to improvise and change plans because the weather was so horrible I couldn't go to several points which was my plan. Instead I had to create a from location to print video in which I show you the the initial part where I get the photo how I work it and the print and that's what's happening today I've come to this great little village there is a rather famous bridge in the village that everyone comes to photograph I've photographed it in the past. It's it's beautiful. It's really easy access because it's in the center of the village. So there isn't really a vlog that I could do about this bridge on its own in terms of an in the field video. Instead, I've decided to do another from location to print video. So we're going to go and take a photo of this bridge. I'm going to show you how I processed it and then I'm going to print it. Now you might be curious as to where I am and I am currently in the village of Carbridge and this is the old pack horse of Carbridge. It's a beautiful stone bridge that has an amazing arc. It's stunning and it's a bit Instagram famous. Because we are in the center of the village for this location, I'm going to use my pocket camera as a point of view camera on the approach to the bridge. And then I'll set up my main vlogging camera while I set up the DSLR to take the photo. So I don't know if there's gonna be any sun sunrise colors. There's a lot of heavy cloud over there, but we're facing west and I'm looking east and there is a little bit of light just coming through but I don't know if the clouds will catch any colors who knows we'll just have to wait and see but yeah so today is a from location to print video and I hope you enjoy it So the idea behind this shot is very simple. I've tried to get as central as I can while keeping the full shape of the bridge. If I go to more, any more to the right and I'll be, there'll be a tree blocking out the bridge. And that's it really. I'm shooting quite wide at 17 millimeters to get the full scale of the river. And because there's some little stones in the corner that I didn't want to clip out quite yet, I'll, I'll see in the processing whether I want those there or not. There's not really any any colours in the sky yet, and uh, I'm I'm just exposing. I'm going to take a few images to pick the best of the bunch as the light develops. What I do really like, which I wasn't expecting, is there's some lovely oranges, reds around and yellows around the the bridge. Uh, my plan originally was probably to convert it to a black and white, which I have done in the past, but for this one, I think I will leave it as a colour and keep those reds and oranges in the, in the shot as well. 
So that's, that was a bit of a surprise. But I think that's it for this part. And we'll cut back home and I will talk you through the editing. So let's dive in with the image that I got this morning. Now I've select, you can see down here, I have, I actually ended up taking 36 images of that bridge as the light developed, as the morning developed. And you can see the differences here, like that, changing the exposures and the factors, just seeing what goes in. And like on this one, it's too bright. So if I just um, go to the develop panel and I can click that. Now there's no blown highlights. I thought there was, but there's no blown highlights, but it's just a bit too bright. The one that I had selected, this one, it was this one. And I chose this one because of this pattern. I just like this pattern in the water. The streaks. I just like that. Now this tree is bothering me. So I am probably going to crop that. And these rocks are bothering me a little bit. So I might crop that as well. Um, you know, you got you shouldn't be afraid to crop images. There is enough pixels there to still be able to print at a large size, even if you crop out, crop the image down. Okay. The first step, as with the last of these videos that I always do, lens corrections, remove chromatic aberration, just like that. Because if I turn that off, you might, yeah, look there. If I go to one, you can see there pink and greens fringing on this tree on the edge and that's just due to this lens again I was using the 17 to 40 which does suffer from diffraction and it does suffer from distortion and it does suffer from chromatic aberration it's it's a good lens don't get me wrong it's a brilliant lens especially in this area if I zoom in that's perfectly in focus I'm at 200 percent and you can see how well it's focused there but around the edges there will be a bit of diffraction and a bit of chromatic aberration it just happens with this lens and I'm sure it happens with all super wide angle lenses so I'm just going to click that and boom it's gone see before after removed brilliant now as I said with this image I think I'm going to play with the crop because I don't like this tree. Primarily it's this tree that's bothering me. The rocks could possibly stay as a little stepping stone, but I want to get rid of the tree. You know what, I think I just will have to accept the presence of the tree because this pattern was what interested me most about this, this image. That's the, one of the big different factors between all of them. So that's the one that I chose. I just like this streaking. Okay, so if I crop the image to get rid of this tree, I lose the pattern in the water, which is what I wanted. Now, I, I tried reframing it while I was there and I could not find a way. I, I tried landscape over here. It's a bit tighter, but you lose the pattern and that pattern was one of the big factors for me. So let's go back to the image. I'm gonna have to just accept that that tree is there. It would be better if there was two trees and it looked balanced. I could try, I could clone it out, but that's, that's ridiculous. That's too far in my opinion. Um, as I said did it before, I don't like to over edit pictures or what I consider to be over editing. There's a tree there in real life so I have to accept the fact that there's a tree in my image. Simple. So now I want to work on the exposure. Again I'm going to lift the shadows a little bit because of these darker areas they're quite distracting. So I'm going to lift the shadows just a little bit just by 20. That's it. That's all that one needs. And I'm going to drop the highlights because I don't like this white very white patch over here and here so if I drop those highlights down again not this one doesn't need a lot just by 25 from 
0 to minus 25 Bosch. Get a lot more definition here in those clouds up here, which I like. And I'm just going to check this tree for chromatic aberration because some, yeah, look, you see that there? That's a little bit of purple D fringe, um, purple fringing. Where there's highlights, there's a higher likelihood of having chromatic aberration. So I, I'm just going to manually adjust that like that and you see it's gone that just gets rid of any chromatic aberration at all by doing that little manual adjustment there you can't see it anymore now i want to i'm going to use the dehaze because as i said before i quite like that this is one of my favorite tools in lightroom it just helps to give a bit more definition to everything and i think about there is good now, I, the image that I've taken of this bridge in the past, I've converted to black and white. Every image, because it, there wasn't a lot of colour definition, there wasn't too much going on. But this time, I'm amazed by these. These red berries in the tree and here. Got these lovely autumnal colours just creeping in. Is it berries? No, oh, it's actually leaves. Wow. I've never seen it, that those bright red leaves around this bridge before so I want those to be an element of the picture because they just really stand out um, and I'm going to just creep up the saturation just a little bit because I also want these blues in the sky and what have you to stand out and then as with uh, you've seen it in my editing style I do like vibrant colors when when I go colour photography, I want it to be colour photography. I don't want it to be washed out. Otherwise, I just shoot black and white, and I love to shoot black and white. Um, but for this one, yeah, I want I want those colours. I want that contrast between this red patch of leaves and this bluey effect of the water and the clouds. I think that's a wonderful contrast and. The red also contrasts with the green and the yellows and there's just so much colour in this image that I just wanted to emphasise it a little bit more. Now I'm going to check my colour balance. Now the water is an unreliable white balance area because look there's these browns and yellows tinging it and that's natural, that's natural. And again I could use a cloud like that but it will make the whole image like a sepia tone which I don't like because the clouds were blue they were blue clouds so I've just got to pick an area I think maybe this patch of water here is still too yellow look at that way too yellow this was early morning it was a little bit blue you can't use those high oh I could still too yellow I don't like it looking too yellow so the eyedropper is not working for me here maybe if I put it on a grey it's a little better it's just but it's made it more blue so redo that a little bit more blue, a little bit more green. Mm. Now I could try just adjusting it minutely manually and this is based on taste you know this is very close to what it was that morning um, it's just whether I want it to be just a little bit more a little bit less blue a little bit more yellow there I think is good so if we go down that's what it was before that's what it is now very minute just increased it by 250 Kelvin and that's just added a little bit more warmth to the greens and to the the, the browns and greys of the bridge and I could adjust this to be a bit greener or a bit more pink I th I'm happy with it where it was at 22. I think that's pretty accurate. 
and I think that's it for this one. I'm quite happy with how it looks, to be honest. I think it looks pretty good. Mm. I'm actually just dropping the highlights a little bit more than what I did earlier because that brings in this cloud a bit more and gives a bit more, yeah, gives it more atmosphere, a bit darker. But I don't think it needs any more. I don't think it needs anything else done to it. I don't think it needs any brushwork. It's just going to be spot removal, which, like last time, is fairly boring. There's one there. As you can see, I'm not the best at keeping things spotless. I do try. But, um, you know, everyone should do spot removal. It was one of the biggest mistakes I did when I was first starting out. I never checked my images at 100% or 200% um, to see spots, see the chromatic aberration, the diffraction, the sharpness. So just being able, I found that being able to do that and learning to do that was one of the biggest improvements from when I first started digital photography. So now we've done the spot removal. I can prepare the file for printing. Before I export this file, print on paper, it's a bit darker than what you see on the screen because the screen is backlit, it's lit up, it's lighting through the image. I prepare the image how I like it to look on screen I then just increase the exposure and I've never had a problem with the image not looking like it does on the screen that way. That's my way of doing it and as I said in the last video, please let me know if you have a different way of doing it, but that's what I do. And again I'll just export my print preset which has it in a TIFF format with the paper that I'm going to be using which is Silk Variata. I created the ICC color profile for that using um, an X-Rite iStudio. So I can I can just choose that ICC profile with a 16-bit depth and that just it really helps render the colors onto the thing onto the paper because it saves the file as CMYK and I found that really works. A resolution of 300 pixels per inch that's perfect and I, I I use the matte paper sharpened standard because I don't want it over sharpened and I don't think it needs that much sharpening either and I just export that as a TIFF so if the file there as a thumbnail it doesn't look right but if I open it in preview to give you an idea it converts it perfectly so it's not an issue with the file, it's just the way that the colour space is being rendered as the thumbnail. Obviously I need this as a portrait. And again I'm going to be printing A3 like last time. I just need to put that on the Silk Barriata manual feed tray. Because it's a thick paper. And for the Canon to process it, it needs to go in there. Print quality highest, I always choose highest. I've then got the ICC profile for the paper, it loads that automatically. And I can just drag this file, drop it into there, boom. Ready for printing. And all I have to do is just load the paper and let it do its thing. And it takes a while for printing an A3 image of this size. So for this one, it's gonna be a few minutes. So I've just got some archival gloves, lint-free gloves, which I will stick on. So, that's just to keep smudge prints off of the paper as I take it out of the box. So this is 300 DSM Silk Barriata paper by Pinnacle, which is a beautiful paper. And the 300 DSM just gives the paper a bit more weight. And I'm going to load it into the manual feed tray at the back here. It's not completely flat, but that's not much of a problem. There's not a lot of space here. So I'm just going to move around like that. Check the settings, A3 Pinnacle Barriata. Register. It's going to do its magic, which is going to take 
quite a while, so I usually get on and do some other stuff while that's going. That looks good. I'm just going to let it dry before I examine it in the living room in the natural light. So there's actually a couple of little mistakes on this print. But as it's for personal use, it's not much of an issue. If it was for a client, I would reprint this and make sure that I got it exactly right. So the issues with this print that I have noticed upon examining it is um, one is to do with the editing and it's just that I missed one of the spots. I didn't do as thorough a job because I wanted to get, I was recording and I, I wanted to move on to the next part. So there's just one little spot here that I would like to remove. But again, as this is for personal use, it's only for my personal print collection, it's not a big deal. I would prefer it to be perfect, but there you go. And the other issue is, it just looks very, very slightly at an angle, like imperceptibly, like, need to measure but maybe only like two millimeters at an angle on one side like that and that was just to do with how I loaded the paper incorrectly it wasn't completely flat I think it looks good you can see all the beautiful colors you can see the definition the diffraction is not too much of an issue with something like this the print of this size it would be if it was a bit bigger but I think it worked out pretty well I'm pretty happy with the result so that's it for this video. A little bit of an insight into my editing process and, um, and the printing part is just to show you that I like to print pictures. I think we've become such a digital platform with the invention of digital cameras and everything else that we've sort of moved away from the physical side of photography. And that's something that I, I think we need to get back to. I, I learned photography with my school that's where I started and we had a dark room where we could process our own film, print our own pictures using an enlarger and it was the best. I, I would like to get my own dark room up and running at some point um, when I have my own <laughs> proper house and I have the space for it um, because it's something that I miss. I, th I found it such fun and so tactile touching the paper and, and manipulating it using light in the dark room and the chemical process everything to do with darkroom photography is amazing and i really want to get back to it at some point in, in my life so this the printing part of this is just my attempt to recapture that physical essence of photography that i've lost since i moved to digital format um several years ago it's just i like i like to hold the print i like to hold the paper it's something that I'm still learning about. I'm rambling, so I'm going to cut this short. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've liked today's format of location, edit, print, then please let me know in the comments and I'll try and make some more of these in the future. I think my panel is losing batteries. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and comment and I'll do some more of this style of photos, of videos in the future. If you have enjoyed today and you would like to see more of these sorts of videos, then also consider subscribing. It means that you can keep up to date and every time I make a video like this, you'll, you'll know. And um, it really helps me out and it helps me, my channel grow and it means that I can keep making videos as I enjoy the process and it just is it's nice to know that they're being viewed thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one